In this video, I'm straying a little from my usual focus on electronics and robotics, and I'm going to be fitting a power feed to my milling machine. My bench mill is a Sieg SX 2.7L, and I recently noticed that the main supplier for Sieg machines in Australia were offering a bolt-on power feed upgrade for the X-axis. There is a number of benefits that come with having a power feed, including the obvious one, which is reduced effort and fatigue from no longer having to drive everything with the hand wheel. Power feeds can improve the precision, quality, and overall consistency of your milling. Suffice to say, I wanted one, and now I have one. The kit was delivered in a good strong cardboard box with some thick foam inserts as packing, and it came with some okay but not so clear instructions. Inside, we have the main power feed unit with a variable speed control knob, a left-right toggle switch, and two LEDs, one that indicates power, and the other if there's a fault. Here we have a 240 volt AC to 24 volt DC transformer with a power lead for the transformer fitted with an Australian plug, a small enclosure with limit switches and a lead, two adjustable limit stops, and a selection of socket head screws needed to attach the clutch and the limit switch box to the mill. And finally, this is the clutch adapter block. A lot of these kits, this one included, are made in China and they all look very similar. This piece is the one that will vary the most depending on the mill that the kit's been designed for. The first thing to do when getting started is to remove the existing end plate from the left hand end of the table by unscrewing the two M6 socket head screws and then carefully easing that plate back away from the table. I'll just also mention quickly that now's also a good time to make any adjustments to the two backlash adjusting screws while you have easy access. The clutch adapter block can be screwed into place using the two longer M6 socket head screws that come in the kit. And you want to ensure that the slot in the end of the lead screw lines up with the mating corresponding male part inside the clutch. You can turn the X axis hand wheel back and forth as the screws draw the clutch assembly into place just to get the correct engagement. Once you can feel that it is engaged correctly, you can fully tighten those screws. This mill already comes with two M3 tapped holes in the front of the table, which makes mounting the limit switch box using the provided screws a very straightforward process, and there was no drilling or tapping of holes required here. The two adjustable stops can be fitted to the table's front T-slot and tightened. I'm just placing one limit stop at each end to act as a simple safety feature, but these can be repositioned elsewhere, anywhere along that T-slot as needed. Here I'm mounting the actual feed unit with the provided screws. And here I'm connecting the limit switch cable into its corresponding socket and making sure that the wire is secured with the P-clip, which provides some strain relief. Now we can power it on and make sure that everything is working as expected. The green LED indicates there is power to the unit, and the amber one will light if there's a fault. I noticed that the fault light comes on if the mains power is connected when the speed control knob is already engaged or in any position basically other than off. I assume this is a safety feature so that the table doesn't just start moving unintentionally when you first power it on. You can reset the fault light simply by turning the speed control knob to the off position and then back on when you're ready to start. To engage the power feed, the clutch knob is turned 90 degrees clockwise so that the arrow is horizontal. You may need to turn the x-axis hand wheel a little at the same time to get the two halves of the clutch to line up and fully engage. The speed control knob can then be adjusted as needed and the toggle switch moved left or right depending on the direction you want the table to move. The motor speeds mentioned in the manual state that it's capable of 0 to 350 millimeters of travel per minute. I'll have to make some more precise measurements to be sure, but first impressions suggest it's capable of closer to 450 millimeters of travel per minute. Either way, this should give you some sense of what it's capable of in terms of speeds. To switch to manual feed, all you need to do is turn the clutch knob anti-clockwise until the arrow is vertical. It's technically still possible to use the hand wheel while the power feed clutch is engaged, but you'll notice there's a lot more resistance because you're no longer just moving the lead screw, you're also turning the motor as well. It would be best just to use this for smaller movements, for example, when edge finding. If the stops are to be used, then they can be placed roughly where required by loosening the M8 nut at the front, sliding the stop into place, and then tightening the nut again. 
Fine adjustments are also possible by altering the length of the spring adjusters. You should also note that depending on the speed of travel, there can be a small delay between compression of the stop spring and switch before the motor ultimately switches off. The power feed enables the use of higher feed rates for insert tools than would be possible when turning by hand. It also allows for much slower and consistent feeds needed for things like high speed steel fly cutters and will typically yield much better finishes than would be possible by hand. Overall, this was a very straightforward upgrade and I'm looking forward to testing it more thoroughly. Hopefully this video will be useful to some folks. Until next time, that's it.